basically three things they said that's the same for me, but uh, I'll even go as far as to saying that I don't have a good body. Uh, I'm probably not the best looking guy in the world, but I've done a lot of drugs that I didn't pay for. I did a lot of girls that I had no business being with, so hey, that sounds good for me. Uh, and you better ask somebody else that. Um, I, yeah, these guys, they, they actually do professional wrestling. I wrestle like in Bob wire glass. Actually, what you're going to see in the movie, uh, the, the guy's like my best friend that's in this movie, Necro Butcher, and, and uh, I'll go ahead and tell you a funny story. Like, I was at the Park Place Cinemas, and during the showings, two old, older people started leaving the theater and it was in the middle of movies so I knew that their movie wasn't over and I said, is there a problem? And they was like, yeah, uh, it's the wrestler. And I was like, uh, what was wrong with the wrestler? And they said, there was a guy on there that was using like staple guns and bob wire and windows and we don't, so don't want to see that. And I just said, yeah, I don't want to see that either because it was much easier than to say and that's what I do too. But, um, for me, there's no way to train to do what I do. You can either do it or you don't do it. But uh, I'm sure these guys have got a different story about that. What did Necro Butcher tell you about performing in the movie and uh, uh, meeting all the, the, the first story people. that he told me, like as soon as this happened, he got he called me right on the phone. He goes, "You're never gonna guess who I talked to." And uh, if you know. If, if you're familiar with Necro, you know his stories are never small. Um, he smokes a little bit of weed and his stories go way, way bigger than what they should. <laughs> but um, he calls me on the phone and uh, he says, you'll never guess who, who I just got done talking to. And I said, I don't know who. He, he works for a company called Ring of Honor. And uh, he's sitting in the locker room of Ring of Honor and Gabe, the owner of Ring of Honor at the time, or the manager or whatever he was, come over and said, Necro, you have a visitor here. And Necro said, okay. And he says, it's Nicholas Cage. He says, yeah, it's Nicholas Cage. He says, no, really, Nicholas Cage is in the next room and he wants to talk to you. And Necro says, all right, if it's Nicholas Cage, bring him in here then. Nicholas Cage walks in and he says, I'll be damned, it's Nicholas Cage. <laughs> so uh, Nicholas Cage was actually uh, casted as the part that Mickey Ward got in the beginning. And, uh, uh, Nicholas Cage and the director both um, wanted to talk to Necro because what they did was they went through YouTube and found characters that stood out. And of course Necro stood out, you know, bigger than a sore thumb. So uh, they actually was going to call his character the Hellboy, but after they saw the popularity that he was getting to do all this work all over the place, they went ahead and changed his character's name to the Necro. And uh, another funny story he told me was that people kept saying that this was going to be Mickey Ward's return, and actually I do agree with them, but Necro wasn't too sure back in the day, because while he, they was doing their scenes, they had to put paper bags on the corners, on all four corners, because Mickey Ward would uh, get so out of breath, and uh, he would hyperventilate, and he'd have to grab one of those bags and, and breathe them in one of the four bags. Then. Um, Another story that, he, uh, well, actually, what, what I'll tell you is, Mickey Ward must have really liked Necro, because did anybody watch Jimmy Kimmel when they, uh, when they interviewed uh, Necro, I mean, I'm sorry, when they interviewed uh, Mickey Ward on there? Mickey Ward was talking about how he has a whole bunch of dogs and named one of his dogs Necro. They didn't say why, but he didn't come up with that name, you know, just out of the blue. He must have named him after the Necro Butcher, so. Uh, and the last story I'll tell you, that, like, uh, I'm sitting in the dressing room and Necro, uh, you know, everybody's putting him over saying, oh, it's so cool that you're, you're in this movie, you know, it's Oscar nominee. And Necro says, no, I'm not the cool one. Ponda was in a movie with tits and ass. <laughs> and, uh, I was like, Necro, your movie got nominated for, you know, an Oscar. And he's like, doesn't beat tits and ass. <laughs> So that's about the percent of it. And um, 
probably he hasn't called me now, but if he calls me uh, during the movie, he's actually, if, I don't know if uh, this this will work, but I'll put my phone on speaker. He's going to call uh, after he gets done wrestling, and then maybe you guys can hear straight from his voice after the movie. I don't sure. know. So he's he's from about. West Virginia, isn't he? Yes, sure is. And he he uh, wrestles barefoot just to prove that. <laughs> Anybody else? How do your families feel about your chosen profession? Bad question. I know we're here right now. Yeah, my mom loves me and all. And uh, uh, one Easter, I got my head split open and my grandma walked through and says, it's so nice to have you here, and my head started bleeding everywhere, so the family from then on didn't like what I do, but they know that I love what I do, so they love, you know, that I'm happy doing what I'm doing, but uh, my wife's right there, if you guys want to ask her how sick is she gets every once in a while, so. I don't know how many times you got to pull away from the ring. Yeah, one time. Uh, I have a wife, five kids. Uh, I don't travel as much as I used to, uh, up until my last child was born nine months ago. That's when I slowed down. Uh, but before she was born, I traveled at least uh, four to five days a week. And I did it for about two to three years straight. And from my standpoint, standing out and looking in, uh, there's nothing more hard on a soul or on your heart than having your little kids cry and wanting you stay home as you travel to another town. So, but there's also the reward as in when they come to a show that's local and their faces light up when they see the daddy perform. So it's, 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 we all got the negatives and we all got the positives on the family. Um, my family uh, has learned, I guess, to be okay with it. Um, my girlfriend doesn't like it that much. Um, I got a little heat with my girlfriend and my mom over a tattoo I got. Um, <laughs> I have to, yeah. to do with wrestling. Um, do y'all want to see this tattoo? Yeah. That <laughs> a tag team called Gorgeous. Oh, no, no, no. You're going to have to do this the right way. I don't know if you can see it from here, but it's um, three hearts. With the red going through, <laughs> two green stars. One says Shane. That's me. The other says Gay G period, A period, Y period, which is Gorgeous and Young. And the bottom one says J period, C period, which is JC. His tag team partner, which is a guy. But on the plus side, <laughs> on the plus side um, it's going to give me on an episode of uh, MTV's True Life. So. What's funny is he said there's actually a plus side to that. <laughs> <laughs> if that's your lifestyle, it's your lifestyle. But, yeah. <laughs>